It's time to adjust those shoulder pads, back home what's left of your hair, and jump into the DeLorean for a look back at what's possibly the best decade anyone could ever have grown up in. Shall we play a game? This is Bring Back the 80s with your hosts, James Alderson and me, Andy Jackson. Welcome <laughs> to edition three of the Bring Back the 80s podcast. It is. Edition three, count them. I believe it. Episode three, we're here and ready to party. And they said it would never last. No, they asked us not to make it last. <laughs> Can we just say a big thank you to everybody who's taken part in it last week, all the people we've had on Facebook, yeah. Instagram, yeah. Twitter, TikTok, yeah. YouTube, you name it, we're on there as well. <laughs> Give you all the contact details a little bit. Back in the 80s, of course, none of that technology to worry. No. But... A whole different swathe of stuff. Yeah, it's like a it's this is like a car boot sale behind the scenes. Surprisingly <laughs> <laughs> enough, that's where a lot of it's come as your poor wife, James. I've cleared it all out. <laughs> your poor wife. Yeah. I can yeah. imagine what you see. I can imagine the look of delight on her face when you come back. I, I used to be married before this uh, podcast died. <laughs> Now I'm free and single, ladies. Absolutely. Get in there. Get in there. Uh, so here we are at the uh, Spring Arts in Haven. Thank you very much again, as always, to the guys for letting us uh, use their wonderful space here. So in this week's episode, we're talking 80s tech and uh, also one or two predictions from the 80s about how we would be living yeah. in sort of like 30, 40 years' time. Yeah, yeah. 40 years, just let me tell you, from the 80s would be two years' ends. Really? In the mid-80s, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, Ridiculous. It is crazy times and we're living... In the future, Andy. We are in the future. This is the bizarre thing, <laughs> is that this is the actual future. Uh, so one of the things that we like to do is uh, give you a little mystery sound okay. every week. Yes. Thank you to everybody who's uh, managed to take the time and the trouble and the effort. We never thought anybody would would make the effort. Or listen. Or even listen. <laughs> Turns out that you are. Maybe it's the thought of winning the tickets or the t-shirts, oh, James. Mate, I, I, I'm hoping I'm going to win. <laughs> no, no, no. So the prize on offer is uh, tickets to uh, the Bring Back the 80s tour yeah. that uh, James is going to be doing later this year and or, or a Bring Back the 80s yeah. t-shirt. Which we now have. Look, <laughs> I feel like I'm playing cards right or one of those Dolly Birds, as Bruce used to call them, not me, um, back in the day. Dolly Birds, show us your t-shirt. That's not a slogan. Anyway, um, so we're <laughs> we've got some now. And they come in your size, my size, and normal people's size. So if you if you're interested in wint- wanting that instead of tickets to see this, congratulations! Somebody <laughs> is going to win one of those in just a second. Whether you want to or not, <laughs> <laughs> sound went like this. Can I just say? Yeah. Bad luck to Greg, who mm. said it was a money order machine. Wow. What is a money order machine? Well, I don't know, but Greg's got one. He's definitely got one of those. <laughs> now, Ikim says, was it a broken fax machine? No. Kind of see where you're coming yeah. from with that. But we did have correct answers from Clara Bell JP, from Lizzie Sutherland, from Tony R, from Are You the Draglin, from Christine Rodriguez, from Dr. Mimi, and Naomi Jones, who, by the way, says, I would love a T-shirt to wear oh. to the show in oh. October. Well, that sounds great. So that is great. Brilliant. And uh, who else have we got here? Let's go to uh, somebody who's actually sent us a voice note. Oh, OK. Uh, a voice note. This is our very first voice note. Thank you for taking a guess. Liz Roebuck here. It's a dot matrix printer. Oh. And I remember my friend's dad works in an office and he used to bring us back reams and reams of the dot matrix printer paper, which was all... <laughs> kind of concertina and we used to use it for drawing and things didn't you used to have to rip off the perforations down the side oh. if you could be asked yeah and sometimes the teachers would allow the pupils to bring in these big thick reams of paper and it was like the it was like their dad was sort of jesus or something they brought in infinite paper i mean amazing in the 80s to just have unlimited paper is it a, a funny thing that something as simple as having a lot of paper would have kept us completely delighted for hours so happy so happy with crayons and coloring in and felt tips on these pages and pages and pages of paper just what a brilliant dad who worked in ibm or someone i mean i'm sure there were some mums working there as well but it always seemed to be the dads that just dumped a load of paper. probably because just getting rid of it cheaper than to cheaper than to take it to the dump <laughs> no such thing as recycling back then shall send it to the school shall we pick a winner yeah out of one of these envelopes yeah one of those great, 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 great. great. okay i'll pick that one reveal yeah one i will i will pride the winner is ryu the draglin 
I'm guessing that's his username, <laughs> unless it's a triple barreled surname. <laughs> Can you imagine if that's what your parents, if that's what your parents said we're going to name you? I mean, if it is, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but yes, well done, Ryu the Dragon. The dragon. Um, I mean, I've, I think I know, I, I know someone who's related to him. Um, I don't. But um, yes, congratulations. It's not. Otherwise, that sounds like a fixed this quiz uh, competition but yes congratulations you get either a t-shirt Choice, yeah. or tickets um or you can buy the t-shirt yeah 50 quid no they're not available in the shops soz so they are proper collector's items then. oh mate probably collector's you know, items yeah why not <laughs> so- i'm like any of this crap. <laughs> <laughs> none of this is collector's items for the t-shirt we've just had printed is <laughs> Isn't it wonderful as well that if you're listening to this, and we thank you for listening or and or watching. I know a lot of people watch the entire thing yeah. on YouTube, yeah. one binge watch. Thank you if you're one of those people. Yeah. Can you imagine, though, that back in the 80s, the internet was just at its, like, tiny birth. Yeah. And there was, you know, the internet was going to be a wonderful, magical thing. And they used to have to do little TV programs that would explain to you, like explainers yeah. of what the internet it's going to be like. Yeah. And we never understood. It never seemed to make sense. I mean, it still doesn't to me, quite frankly. But I remember first people getting the internet in the 90s. And I don't think I properly got internet connection until probably the 2000s, to be honest. But yeah, 80s was all tomorrow's world stuff, wasn't it? This yeah. is what's going to happen. This is going to be the future. And we were like, what is? What does that do? How does it work? Why are we going to use it? And it's the, even after the two episodes, it still didn't make sense. The interesting thing as well is that they thought the, they thought the internet was going to be used for educational purposes. Yeah. They didn't think people were just going to have a well-known adult website. Infinite porn. <laughs> Infinite porn. Poor old Maggie Philbin when she Poor started explaining Philbin. that. Let me take you to an American TV show. This was when they were, this was the very late 80s, just when home internet was becoming a thing. And they were so impressed by the internet that not only did they do an explainer program about it, they wrote a little song as well. Here we go. On the mark, get set. We're riding on the internet, cyberspace, felt free. Hello, virtual reality. Interactive appetite, searching for a website, a window to the world that to get online. Take a spin, now you're in with techno set. You go and surf it on the internet. They didn't even mention porn up. <laughs> <laughs> Did she sing sex free then? And I'm not entirely God, sure. I think you, might have, like, you might have had to make that up. I mean, that's probably why I don't remember that. If that came out when I was a teenager, because the minute she said that phrase, I was out. It switched off. <laughs> yeah, no it off. But it was such a big thing. Yeah. Because he was trying to explain, it's like when somebody tries to explain artificial intelligence to me now. I yeah. guess the internet was the artificial intelligence of then. And you just could not get it in your head yeah. what it was going to be yeah. and how it was going to affect you. Yet here we are. Just using it every day yeah, without even thinking about it. Yeah, always on it. I mean, I remember the first mobile phones in a similar sense. And I had a f- my first mobile phone and I remember it had the, the button on it with SMS on it. And I asked my cousin what that meant. And he said, that's because you can type a message to each other um, and send it. And I said, why the fuck are we going to want to do that? <laughs> Just phone somebody. Well, you remember as well when it. you typed it as well. I can remember these on the first phones. You couldn't just type A, B, C. If you wanted to make a letter, you had to press the same key yeah. like four times. Well, some people listening, though, with the old school phones will still be doing that. My yeah. dad still does that really? type back to me, which is why it's utter garbage when it comes <laughs> through. <laughs> well, what's he typing? He's been taken over by aliens. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's I remember only- as well when predictive text first became a thing so you would be starting to type a yeah. letter and it would guess yeah. the word that you wanted it to be. Yeah. And at the time, I hated it. <laughs> But now it's the only way that I can spell properly. That, in fact, that's the only way when I'm talking to the wife I can complete a sentence is when she fills in the words that I can't remember. And he's like, she's like, yeah, when we went to uh, Newcastle, yeah, Newcastle, uh, <laughs> we went with uh, Barbara. Barbara, yes, it, yeah. So she is my predictive tech. You will be able to do a thing one day where you don't have to do, you don't have to like. She could do both sides of the conversation. Well, she does anyway. Uh, oh, well, we got to my wife again. Um, <laughs> Best, best avoid it. Best avoid it. Yeah. Tell me when you think the first mobile phone call was made. Oh, my goodness. Uh, like commercially, the first in this country, when you could get... Motorola or someone, yeah. someone who made that call. 84. Close, 83. Ooh, 83. One year out. 
Do you want to? Oh, yeah. <laughs> good wrong <laughs> shout. Good, good, you're 80s, aren't you? Yeah. Good job, Billy. Really. Yeah. Here is the uh, Vodafone advert. It's weird to think of Vodafone like being the market leader at the time and still going strong. This is what the uh, TV advert sounded like uh, for one of these newfangled mobile phones. Now the telephone has evolved into the Vodafone. There's nothing unusual about seeing phones on the road. On lakes and rivers, they're an everyday occurrence. And in the middle of nowhere, a Vodafone hardly rates a second glance. Mind you, they're not above talking to old-fashioned phones. Can you come out tonight, then? I'm sorry, I'm all tied up. As more Vodafones appear, we can only wonder whether the telephone is an endangered species. If you'd like to be in when you're out, ring Rakel Vodafone. Feel <laughs> the heft of that. It's a hefty it mobile like phone. Hefty. Motorola. And it, you got, I mean, this is, this is one of the smaller ones at the time. I think this is mid-80s, and that is a hefty bit of kit. The funny thing that makes me laugh is uh, late 80s, I think my cousin got a landline with a screen so you could see people, late 80s, early 90s, with a video screen on it. Like, like FaceTime? Yes, but, on the phone. but the problem being that you couldn't actually see anybody unless they were also minted and happened to be able to afford the same device. Now, these back like when the iPhones were, like 10 years ago or whatever, there's no point in you FaceTiming because they couldn't receive it. But back then, it was like, oh, look at this. I've got an Amstrad video phone. Like, oh, who'd you speak to on that? No, they, <laughs> no one's got one. It's like, what's the point in 199 quid? But there we go. We you vaguely remember those as well. Mm -hmm. And they obviously, they were black and white. Yeah. And it was like, um, I because I remember seeing them demoed probably on Tomorrow's World. Yeah. It? And it was like a line drawing yes. of a person <laughs> moving <laughs> like a stick figure. And you could only buy them from the BT shops in the high streets. <laughs> this is back when BT and energy companies and gas companies had shops in the high street, which were um, when they didn't mind facing up to their customers. <laughs> we did, we, we, so we didn't have to barge in and say, why have I got a 600 quid bill this month? And they go, you shouldn't have had a gas powered telly. Um, but yeah, they, every high street, had a, it's, a it was going company. to pay your bill as well. You would actually go in yeah. and give, you could give them a cheek or write them a check, yeah. go in with actual money to do that as well. But I remember at the time as well, I think we were just probably when the, I think it was the post office was turned into BT, they still had the monopoly yeah. on your home. And if like you wanted a second home phone, yeah. you would have to like have an engineer come around oh, and goodness. run the wires for you. You couldn't do it. It's so expensive. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Channeling it all through, running the cables, testing the line. You'd have to go up the end of the road and make sure it's all well. I don't know where he went. Probably it was for a cuppa. But um, <laughs> just, you know, I just think, what, why, why can't we just do that? And now everyone wants a, their phone in every... They wouldn't more. let you have a phone in a bathroom as well because it was too electrically dangerous. <laughs> In case you were electrocuted, why can't you run the bathroom? And now, and now we don't go in the bath without our phone. No. <laughs> Just the, the weird thing is that as people are listening to this podcast right yeah. now, or even worse, watching this podcast, yeah. chances are somebody is sitting on the toilet yeah. doing exactly that. Yeah, disgraceful. Stop it. <laughs> so if you have, uh, if this is the first episode that uh, you've uh, started listening to, so and there are another two, yep. started two episodes ago, yep. this is episode three where we're talking about all the uh, sort of 80s tech and uh, some of the predictions of the future uh, that were going on. Um, also, we're going to be having a new mystery sound for this week. Yes. Which we're going to be doing very shortly. Great. Shortly indeed. So obviously we showed off the uh, oh, marvellous mobile phone that yeah. you, in the Motorola. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What else have you brought in to uh, to show off this week, James? I think the ultimate technology really for the 80s is where they were combining things. So you'd get like a torch and a extendable fork or um, I, you'd get a wrench and a, 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 a clock or something. that could buy. And this... Right, I'll show you this because this is what you have is the ultimate is an ultimate demonstration of the eighties. Just okay. describe it's what a we've it's a Parker pen with a digital clock in the end. Because we all know when we were writing at school, we were thinking, when the fuck is this lesson finishing? <laughs> <laughs> and um, you, if you were caught, I don't know about you, but if you were caught looking at your watch, your teacher would had spotted you. They go, "Oh, you'd be delaying you from getting anywhere, all yeah. of a sudden, or whatever." They got detention once for yawning in biology. Um, the teacher said to me, am I keeping you awake? And I said, yes, which I thought was the right answer. But apparently that's rude. I should have said no and fallen asleep. Anyway, I'm digressing. I, I always remember having great 
comebacks to the teacher yeah. in my head. I'd say, you'd ask me that, <laughs> and I've got such a good comeback. And then when it comes to, the, you know, when they ask you that question, you say, don't know, sir, don't know. <laughs> Just chickened out at the last minute. But these were epic. Um, they were around the time that digi- uh, calculator watches came out. Um, do you remember they, were, they had the full di- yeah. account? And obviously these these things, the calculator themselves, the scientific calculator, all of this technology, uh, I've got one here with the instructions in it, with obviously all the scientific sin, cause, tan. Do you remember? Well, did I, what did sin, cause and tan mean? Well, be honest with you. I, 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 maybe it meant that the maths was cinch. And um, the, you, you finish your math so early, you can go out and have a tan. I don't know what I meant, but I never pressed any of the buttons. Nobody needed to know. No. But did you remember they always used to say if you would like uh, if you used your calculator in class, yeah, they would always say to you, you can use your calculator now, but remember you won't always, always have a calculator <laughs> with you. <laughs> always, you can you know you can use it now if you want to, but you won't have a calculator with you. No, at all times in life. No, no. So bear that in mind and make sure you're good at math. Oh, the, all my mates squinted on me in an exam because it was the start of GCSEs and because um, I'm young and um, we uh, we were in the lesson uh, in the exam where you weren't allowed to use a calculator but I had my calculator watch on my Catholic, and all the kids were like sir Alderson's got a calculator watch and it's a bit like saying to the teachers in the 30s Alderson's got a phone or something they were just their minds <laughs> were not blown. believed so they were like you what oh uh, yeah I mean I couldn't press it anyway then with my fat fingers and the little buttons that couldn't have done anything. But um, it was it just, you could tell my kid, my mates were so frustrated because I was going to cheat, but I couldn't cheat. I got an A, obviously. Oh, but, uh, but nothing to do with the Casio calculator watch, if only. And I'm going to show you this, okay? This is uh, what, what one of the one of the fascinating things of the 80s. Tell us and what it is, James. It's what I said. Well, I'm going to take out the box in a minute. In a minute. Any time now. Now, this is brand new. Well, it's not brand new, obviously, but it's. Um, what everybody had, and that I consider to be the gadget that you lived by in the 80s, and that is one of the little phone, if I do this next to the thing, where you slide your slide it along next to the phone to get to the right letter, and then you would reject it, and it would have it revealed in front of you all the different <laughs> names and numbers of your friends and family. So it's like an it's like an overcomplicated phone and address book yeah. in a little plastic pop-up holder yes. about the size of your hand. Yes. Everybody had one next to the phone. Oh, and a telephone table in the yeah. hall. Yeah, because it had its own seat. Because yeah. you had to go for a walk to so make a phone oh, call. Yeah. I mean, these days, everyone picks up the phone and goes for a walk anyway. Um, but back then, you went to a walk at the end of the hall, sat down slid that down to D for Dave, pressed eject, it popped open and everybody's name beginning with L uh, was revealed in front of me because they were a bit rubbish. But they were the ultimate. I mean, to be honest, we didn't really need them because we all remembered our numbers, didn't we? Do you still remember some I of your numbers? I remember my first home phone number. I can remember my dad. My dad's shop's phone, home, home phone. Have you tried ringing it? It wouldn't have enough numbers now. Oh, really? You remember because they used to add numbers every, mm. every about 10 years or so. Yeah. They'd say, oh, we've run out of numbers. <laughs> so like, I remember London used to be 01. Yeah. And then it became O one O something. Yeah. And they just added numbers in because they'd run out of numbers. And then they go, I want one We need more numbers. Yeah. And then they would have to reprint all the phone books. Yes. Because all the numbers. Ching ching. Yep. Yes, exactly. So that is a fascinating. I mean, it wasn't technology, obviously, but we thought it was magic. What it? they've done is they've taken a very simple concept of a book. Yeah. But they've made it look technological. Yeah. By putting buttons on it that you can press. Amazing. No point whatsoever. Magical. No point on that. Uh, we were talking about the internet as well. Yeah. And uh, obviously the Americans explained to us in song what you could do it. Right. Do you want to know in the very early days of the internet, and this was demoed on uh, Tomorrow's World, uh, they did a, or no, it might have been another, another program similar to Tomorrow's World. Yeah. But they showed somebody the simple process of making, sending somebody an email. <laughs> Remember, this is something that nobody had ever done before. I might listen to this. And I love, I absolutely love the uh, way they, you know, describe how the process went at the end of this clip. It's about a minute long. Okay. Here we go. Pat Green and Julian, welcome to Database. Hello, Jane. Hello, Jane. Uh, Julian, I see you have your computer linked to the telephone line. Can you tell us how you did that? Yes, well, it's very simple, really. Um, the telephone is connected to the telephone network with a British Telecom plug, and I simply remove the telephone jack from the telecom socket and plug it into this box here, the modem. I then take another wire from the modem and plug it in where the telephone was. I can then switch on the modem and we're ready to go. Not yet. 
um, the computer is asking me if I want to log on. Oh. And it's now telling me to phone up the main Prestel computer. Oh, Jesus. Which I'll now do. Ah, here you go. Um, oh. Which is a very simple connection to make. Oh, it's extremely simple. <laughs> <laughs> you read there. I'm not too sure. The, he knows what he's doing. Me, the rest of the clip goes on for 10 minutes before he actually ma- manages to send a little message. Let's hope he's not sending an emergency call oh, or anything. <laughs> an emergency email. Help me. No, I mean, it, that's back in the day before we had computers in our homes. I mean, a lot of the things that we've got here, like the ZX81, the ZX Spectrum, um, Commodore 64, they're all like the first, the Atari even, the first computers we all had entered our homes. And uh, it was just magical. But that was back when, back, back just before that, there was one computer in school. One in a computer. It was a BBC Micro. My, yeah, BBC yeah. yeah. Micro. Yeah, like, and, it, and it printed the dot matrix printer. That yeah. Was doing this app. And we'd go in there and you have to have permission and they'd unlock the room and you'd go and sit in there and we'd all wait and look over it and then we'd get our computers in our homes and then we'd all get, you know, paper boy and they get handheld and it's all crazy. I, I remember... Um, going into the uh, school with my first walkman and just feeling like um, magic just walking there with a tiny little portable cassette player and then in the 80s it just changed so quickly and then by the end of the 80s we all had portable I got put up there I got portable CD player which was the most bollocks bit of kit you've ever had in your life again <laughs> this is like is the Sony Discman yes is the Follow on to the Sony Walkman, Walkman yeah. set one. Yeah, yeah. This weighs. I'm, it's it's, I'm, in, I'm holding it in my yeah. hand. First of all, this would never go in your pocket. No, it's no. The size of two. I'm just going to say it's the size of two fag packets. Yeah, next well, to well, yeah. And it yeah. used to come with a, st- a handbag strap, but it was utterly pointless because a cassette has two spools. It holds it in. It's a ribbon. It's tight. That one to oh, hold on yeah, and yeah. spins. Yeah. So you start walking with that bad boy. You're not getting a tune. Not get a sensible tune out of it. Um, I remember walking just to go meet my dad once, and all it did was just gyrate and just make random noises. I, I, you could play, you could keep it in the car, but on your dashboard, bloody useless. I remember actually, they used to make special mounts for them. Yeah, they were called anti-skip mounts, so you could have like a like a flexible, springy arm. Yeah. to mount your CD player. On, yeah, so you could hear a CD through yeah. your car stereo, which at the time, yeah, was. Just groundbreaking. I, I think though, <laughs> this is technology through and through for that. I think I had an adapter to play my CD player through my cassette in my car. It was a plug into the CD cassette. player and a cassette that pl- <laughs> slotted into the cassette player. It's like you're not really getting the CD quality, no. James. <laughs> I do yeah. remember those. Yeah. I do remember. And now, of course, you, you would always have that little bit of wire coming yeah. out of the pretend CD. Yeah, you, yeah. How the hell is this actually yeah. going to work? Did it, yeah. it work? It did. And now, of course, we have one computer in our classroom at school. But now, every kid has got an iPad at school. They've all got their own computers. So walking around school, kids, schools are giving the kids an iPad. It's disgraceful. Good time. Shouldn't Good be allowed. Time. <laughs> so, what else have you brought in this week, James? Well, I, what else can I show you? Really, this is the first. This is the first m- mobile pocket TV. Let's so say it's a Casio out. LCD pocket color TV. TV four hundred. Who are just the TV four hundred <laughs> for people who are just, who are just who are just listening to this rather than watching it. Yeah. It's about it's the, it fits in your hand. Yeah. Left, doesn't it? But how big is the screen, James? I mean, in man inches or normal inches? Um, no, that's, uh, I'd say it's about two inches from corner to corner. I think that's a man inch. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got, the, it's got the UHF frequency. This is the thing, right? I've got this telly next to me, this bright orange 80s telly with a flat screen. It's only flat screen because it's had a bit of glass put over the bulbous screen. Um, but you have to tune in your telly. I mean, you're trying to explain to a kid now you've got to tune in a telly. I mean, they'd, Unthinkable. they'd, they'd unravel. If they had to spend time actually trying to find a channel, boom. Oh, uh, <laughs> and you'd have to have your dad up in the attic or on the roof turning the TV there all around <laughs> because there was a bit of ghosting going on. Go, you don't get ghosting. Do you remember ghosting? Yeah, I, and I also remember my mum sending me over to the TV to adjust the internal aerial and then it was perfect and then I'd come back to the sofa and it wasn't perfect. I was earthing. You got it. <laughs> I had to hold it. It was always the case, was it? You know, if you were holding it, it was perfect. As soon as you let go and sit down, yeah. something magically changed. See, that's why we were so fit, Andy, in the 80s. It's yeah. you made to stand up for 30 minutes of Emmerdale Farm. We had to stand there 30 minutes, eat your dinner. You could, back then, put your dinner plate on top of the mm. telly. Oh, yeah. A big wooden telly on wheels with three buttons. And you put your, your dinner plate 
on the telly and eat your dinner while you're holding the aerial so your mum could watch the perfect screen. <laughs> That's basically fitness in the 80s. And the other thing as well, when the TV, let's say you through some somehow you did manage to magically sit down <clears> and the you know the TV program stayed the same. Well, you would have changed the channel. Mm. You actually had to stand up, walk over to the TV. Yeah. And press an actual button I know. on the TV. Although mid to late eighties, they did bring out the first remote control tellies, but they were on a wire. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was talking to the wife the other day, and I realised that the first remote control car I had was on a wire, and it was about three feet of wire as well, not even twenty foot of wire. So you just had to just chase right the out. car, yeah. and like those first yappy dogs. Do you remember the dogs that would jump and then spin just over and backflip? Back they yeah, were yeah. with a, in a yeah. wire. I mean, I got that poor dog. It was just who. I mean, it was great at, back in the day. You didn't have to push the car along. You'd just use a remote control. But that three foot of wire, when you get backache, just run across, trip over great it. Great big batteries in it as well. Yeah. And when to go, no such thing as rechargeable batteries, no. obviously you get the, you know, you get the whatever batteries they were from Boots. Double D. They'd last yeah. no, five double. minutes and yeah. that would be it again. Yeah, yeah. Or you get those huge ones would go into massive torches that your dad would have. Remember the torches? Your dad would throw you a torch that was a bit like a fire extinguisher. Like a weapon. Yeah, yeah, just like change the, especially when you had a power cut, which was every other day um, in the eighties. And you three, get, so get you get this battery in that torch, and you'd um, you'd open the top of the torch as if you were trying to I don't know put some fuel in something. Well, you were, and then he'd give you the battery that would barely fit in your hand. You'd drop it in, and the spring at the bottom was so strong, it would almost bounce back out. You're like. Oh, the torch is as big as me, Dad. Get the torch on. I can't see you. Mum's going to light another candle. There's a gas leak somewhere. Yeah. Do you remember the ways, if you had one of those little nine volt batteries that mm. you still get them, if you weren't sure it was, whether it was a good one or not, do you remember, did you, or was it just me that used to test it? Do you know what I'm gonna I say? wonder what was wrong with you, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to do that just without boredom. Just put it on your tongue. So you just put the two terminals on your tongue. Yeah. If it gave you shock, yeah. that means it was just... It's ready to go. Yeah, you could certainly power the telly. Yeah, I know. Don't try this at home. No, don't do that and don't pick wood chip off your wallpaper. <laughs> I love of those things that you used to do when you were bored. Now, can I give you James's special lunchbox it's surprise? James's special lunchbox <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Well, I, this has nothing to do with technology. So I just, in the Transformers just, lunchbox? Yeah, it's just very hot in here. And I thought, let's give you an 80s classic. You won't find this anymore. And I've got it just for you. I've tracked it down because um, you can't get it anymore um, because it's now called Fanta Pineapple. It's an original Lilt can. It's, got, it's, it's in date, a Lilt can. All right, did you ever like Lilt? Yeah, I used to love yeah. it. Totally um, tropical taste. Lilt. 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 Um, yes, so um, I've got one myself because it's very hot in here. And they've they renamed it, I'm livid, they've renamed it Fanta Pineapple and Grape. I mean, why? I've got no idea. But Lilt was just the go-to yeah, summer drink we can yeah. because it is in date. I think it's in date. Have a sip of it. Let me know it's in date. No, it's, it is in date. It's in date, okay. When is it in date? Is it in date? Here we go. Yeah. It is in date. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Lovely jubbly. Cheers. Happy summertime. Cheers. It's so, I think, you know what? I think that we are so good for the climate at the minute because every time we're in this frigging place, which is like a conservatory, it is steaming hot. So every two weeks, time your suntans. Just watch this outside. We are sweating like pigs here. Oh, that is a totally tropical taste. It is. Okay, it's it taking is. me right back. Gonna, there. It's lovely. Right back there. Why did they change the name? It's got all the sugars, all the salt, all the everything in it. It's got everything in there. No beer, no fruit acid. It's good stuff. I don't know if it might have fruit acid. Anyway, um, have you spotted what was the technological, the pivotal moment in technology on telly? I, I've got a, a cordless Casio digital guitar here. And the, if you were. Love Top of the Pops in the 80s. Everything was wireless. Oh, my God, this is so heavy. <laughs> everything was so heavy. Yeah. Everything was so heavy. Everything. And it's, that's, this still works. And it's, I don't know if they were, when they were running out of calculator sales. Do you, by the way, do you remember going in and buying a calculator from W.H. Smith? Yeah. You couldn't just pick one up off the shelf. No, you had to, you had to come from behind the glass. The glass the, cabinet. And you got the glass cabinet. Where the Parker pens were. And there was a woman stood there full time just selling calculators and pens. Because a calculator was like 20 quid and the pen was a tenner, which is equivalent to like 100 quid for a calculator. But you couldn't actually just go and help yourself. Anyway, I'm digressing. Yeah, on top of the pops, if you didn't have wireless stuff, well, you were a rubbish band. Wireless, you had a wireless microphone with a little wire sticking out oh, the bottom. Yeah. Wireless keyboard, walking around with it like a handbag. Wireless 
digital guitar. So this is this. I just want to describe this. This is a full size guitar. Yeah. That weighs a hundred tons. <laughs> but it's like it's got um, it's got buttons for rhythm. You can have rock, yeah, pops, country yeah. swing, bossa nova. Of <laughs> course, the well known eighties, the well known eighties uh, genre, the waltz, the waltz. Yeah, classic. <laughs> that was probably used by Boy George. That very guitar, but do the bossa nova. Bossa nova was the standard rhythm yeah. of any Casio. Yeah. <laughs> This is a very a cool device. device. Very clear device. It is. And it's, so this um, is this week's prize, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's my son. He loves that. Um, but yes. So yeah, the, the irony of, of it, of course, is that everything was wireless on top of the pops, but none of those bastards were actually singing. Were they? They teeth. That's what they started miming. Well, the thing is, it was a, because the musicians' union, right? It was a very weird thing that um, the that every time you went on top of the pops, then you actually were supposed to technically re-record the tune that you'd spent weeks, months, years right. recording, but using members of the BBC musicians to recreate that song. Right. This was a union thing, and I swear to you this is true. So what would happen would be that the bands would go in, they would do the song with the BBC musicians, so the BBC musicians would be doing it, yeah. then they would take the master tape away, then the band would then do their own, bring their own tape in, so they were pretending to use the BBC musicians. So the BBC musicians mm. union, they all got paid. Yeah. So they effectively went into work for no reason at all, <laughs> but they all got paid. And then, uh, you know, as you heard, the proper version of the song would be the one that would go out and the tech people behind the scenes would would swap the tapes <laughs> over at the last minute. But yeah, back in the days of unions being king, yeah, yeah, that is what happened. That's the 80s for you. Yeah. Only it were like that now. Thank Only God that's like blown. That hey, no. Well, we don't even have Top of the Pops, Andy. Very, very depressing. Um, but yeah, we should bring that back. Definitely. Definitely. This is an epitome of 80s. Because the 80s, in my mind... Describe what you've got there. Well, it, this is this is a um, Metal Mickey annual. Now, it, early 80s. Now, if you think about it, 80s... I reckon the reason the 80s technology is so marvellous is we went from landline to mobile phone. We went from, you know, record players to mobile CDs. We went from Metal Mickey to Robocop, right? This was the future, wasn't it? You talk about AI earlier. This is this is what we thought we were gonna have. You know, what Metal Mickey. Metal yeah. Mickey. Yeah. Did he huge. have his own TV show? He did yes. his own TV show, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. Exactly. And he was bloody enormous. I mean how he got around that little house, I've got no idea. I don't think he did. I think he was always in the kitchen. Did we ever see him going upstairs? I'd, probably like the Daleks we probably couldn't probably couldn't go up the stairs, could he? <laughs> Maybe they had one upstairs as well. Maybe there was a metal mini. I don't know what the what there was, but yeah, that was the the idea of the future was uh, just a robot in everyone's terraced house. We will be getting on to future predictions very shortly as well. It's time to do this week's mystery sound, though. Oh, go on, then. So here comes this week's mystery sound. Uh, if you want to take a guess at this, you can let us know what you think it is on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, yep. email. Write to us. Go to bringbackthe80spodcast.com. Yeah. That's where it's all collected in one little thing. If you know what this is. Now, you may instantly know what this is, James. You Maybe. You instantly know. Maybe. Here we go. Yes. But is that it? That is it. That's all you get. What? That is all you get. Oh, I, I uh, can we have another go of it? Here we go. <laughs> wow. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was the era of arcades. Every high street had an arcade. So we've got to guess specifically what that is. You got to tell me, yeah. And somebody, trust me, yeah. I put money on this. Somebody will know, wow, from exactly what year, oh, and exactly what system. That oh my was. god, Garen, guarantee. See, I was an addict. Were you an addict of arcades? I used to go in. I used, I used to go in, to and one. yeah, they had one in the in the chip shop. Right, it was obviously oh, a double bonus because you would go in and get your chips. Yeah, and then while you're waiting for your chips, no, it was just mental. I just loved them. The atmosphere in those places, and you get your ten p. You'd find a ten p, then you'd walk up the street and find your arcades. And if you, you know, you have these, mo we've got a Donkey Kong here, little handheld game and match. We've got the Mario ones, you know, all the games that transferred from those arcades in the early mid eighties to the, sorry, we the little, 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 little is really <laughs> recurring on me. It's totally build. tropical belch. That's what it's going to be. It's a totally tropical place. But they all moved over from arcades in our high streets to in our hands it was just mad the late 80s you know when you had all of these magical games um just arriving you know for christmas or whatever it's just brilliant but that's probably to be honest 
why you know it would uh, why the arcades died because we all had them we in our bedrooms we, already. Home. We recreated that yeah. arcade in our own home. Maybe it was the first ever impact on the high street, Andy, of technology. Hey, I think we've come across something there. Everyone says the high street's dying because we're all going online. That was the first shop to shut. Very start. Yes, yeah, sorry, very sorry, high street. We ruined the eighty. We ruined the high street. It was the eighties that did it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you a little clip yeah. of a TV show. Okay. We're talking about predicting the future. See if you uh, see if you recognise this, James. So now our weekly look at some of the latest inventions which may help to shape our future. <laughs> <laughs> Go. Do you notice as well how the continuity people at the time were oh so posh? Yeah, all the time, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now for all the time tomorrow. it used to be in vision as well didn't you because now you never see you never see the people but then mm. they used to have to sit there between the programs in case the tape broke or something oh okay and they would read you bits out of the radio times when it yeah. went wrong and they say ah we've got technical problems here but let me tell you about uh, programs that are coming next week oh really it would yes, literally that. be going through the radio times <laughs> yeah filling for time because the tapes and everything were put on live and if the tape broke yeah then they would have They're to fill for time wouldn't they yeah I know what that's like um, no I know <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've actually, when I was clearing out this tat, sorry, gorgeous 80s stuff, my wife calls it tat. Antique, uh, to and, yeah, gems from uh, the gorgeous decade that is the 80s. Um, I did find that I've got a Radio Times from Christmas 1986. So that's for our Christmas show. It had the EastEnders cast on the front of it. So we're going to have to bring that along and read through that in <laughs> that Christmas episode because it was epic. That, that was, was half the fun oh. of planning for Christmas, though, wasn't it? When the TV Times and the Radio Times came out, mm. you would spend hours... Going through it page by page, circling yeah the you know, a line against it or circle or you do, want to do yeah. that, and you'd have to you know set up the video recorder if you were rich enough to have one of yeah. those to yeah. to get it to record in case you missed it or in case there was two things on you wanted to yeah. you wanted once, but you could spend weeks going through the radio times and the TV times. Thinking, well, obviously it's got to be Morecambe and Wise Christmas special. Yeah, without so it's got to be only fools and horses. There'll be one of the Supermans on. Got to be a hundred percent. And uh, Home Alone as well. Now Home Alone no. probably just been in the just in the cinema at the time. Yeah, then, isn't it? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Um, and I remember my mum got a top loading um, VHS player, and I went round my one of my rich mates' houses once. And he had a front loading one. I was like, wow, this guy's got money. What's going on here? Front yeah. loader. Where did your dad work? IBM. Maybe he nicked it. That's where he nicked it. He sold all the paper on the side. That's where he got his So that, that was something to uh, to to use in the 80s, was the yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Using the, um, so, you know, you had the, the video recorders, but that was the technology of the time. Yeah. Do you remember when there was a new technology came out? There's another clip from Tomorrow's World where they were describing a newfangled thing. I say newfangled, that makes me sound a bloody million years old. <laughs> you, you are. Describing, <laughs> yeah. Like I always say every week, Jay, I'm just a little tiny bit older than you. Yeah, just a little tiny bit. Yeah. But this, see if you can see if you can work out what they're describing here. This was demonstrated on Tomorrow's World. Now, underneath the plastic is the digital code: six billion microscopic pits and spaces that represent the music, and they're arranged in a continuous track, just like the groove on an ordinary record. In reality, the track on this disc is two and a half miles long. The surface is covered by a layer of transparent plastic, so you don't have to worry about grubby fingers or even scratches. That's bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when they demonstrated the CD on the TV, and they promised they were going to last forever. Indestructible. They promised that you'd be able to drive over them. You could yeah. sit on them with a chair, yeah. you know, put them under the chair leg, yeah. still play perfectly. Yeah. Because now we know you couldn't even walk along no. listening to them. No. <laughs> Bloody you, Maggie Philbin smeared jam on hers. Yeah. She was on drugs, I reckon. Um, it's a guess, allegedly. But she was put jam on a CD. Maybe she was skint. But, um, she was listening to a CD doesn't you just to cover Maggie Philbin? Yeah, maybe to just cover our legal ass. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Maggie Philbin wasn't on drugs. Perhaps she was listening to a CD while she was making to jam or toast in yeah. the morning. Yeah. That's probably more likely. I James. think that's probably the reason um, that she did it um, live on air in front of six million people. <laughs> um, smeared jam on it. Then she wiped the CD off, put it in the CD player, and pressed play, and it played beautifully. Play. And it's nonsense because, as we've just just discussed. You couldn't even get a brand new CD to play properly. Um, the selling point of that on that episode was that the CD could hold more than 12 songs. I thought, well, you, you've, you've reined me in. Nine-year-old me couldn't bloody believe that. 
So I mean, the thing is, I'm sipping lilt. Sorry, it's you're going to be burping again, yeah. burping again. The thing is, I got rid of all my CDs, and I know that with the job that I do, I got rid of all my records. I got rid of my CDs because yeah. you don't need no. physical. I mean, obviously, in your case, you do. You need do. Physical. I don't need this. Yeah, and your wife, like, as we know, James is delighted. She can't do. She can't bloody believe it. I'm such a catch. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, but you don't need it. You don't need. You literally don't need. That's what she said. We've been talking last time. <laughs> She can't believe that not only not only have I got all this stuff that comes with the band that is James, but since she's met me, she's got about 60% extra free of me as well. I put on so much weight. So she is loving the extra James and this shit. Um, yeah, yeah. I've got to show you that. Look at this. Get this right off the off the shelving here. Sorry, I'm going to try from the mic then. This, when I was a kid, it's always seemed to be amazing. Because that's what it is. Well, Describe it. It's, it's, I'll do the noise. That I mean that should be enough. We should. Uh, that should be the have that as a <laughs> should secret the, sound, shouldn't we? Right. Delete this episode. <laughs> we'll start it again. We cut all these cameras. Um, no, listen. <laughs> if you're just listening to this, then firstly, congratulations. Uh, if, if you're watching it, it's giving it away. This is magic because it's a card machine thing, and you used to have to write your checkbook details on the back of the slip because they just took your bloody word for it that the card that they were just doing this with the carbon copies and they give you the bit and everything else you've got enough money and if not they write your checkbook de details on the back so that they could then appeal to the bank to say hey he bought this and we need proper money from you and then they'd write to you and say we've drawn out there anyway i'm going into detail because i've experienced this horribly um but it's um just you can you imagine that these days just hoping that you had enough money and it's giving like, you the goods it's like writing a check for somebody say i'll give you a, i'll give you a check here it is there is uh, I owe you fifty pounds. Yes. There is. You've got no way of following me. No, and I'm gone. It's, <laughs> and it's, it's back, but back. People don't take checks now because they know that you're most likely gonna do a runner. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh well, I am. But um, with these, that noise when that went like that, that was as good as. It was just magic. You're like, right, this jumper's mine, or this record's mine. See you later. Um, and this was the start of it. I don't think they did credit cards and debit cards much before the eighties, maybe uh, the seventies in America or Big Smoke. But this, that was just a, a magic. I'm going to put that back up there. Uh, when I found that, I thought, oh, my God, that is just, that epitomizes the 80s. As me as a, getting my first bank card, maybe end of the 80s, early 90s, that, that noise meant wonder. I mean, I just bought something I shouldn't have. I, because I'm just that little teeny tiny bit older than you. A little bit. I was from my first marriage then, and at the time, my wife used to work in a record shop. She managed to manage the record shop in the, uh, in the King's Road in London. Cool. And the... Um, only way that you could detect fraud was they would be sent, or maybe even faxed every morning, faxed a list of stolen credit cards. So in theory, what they were supposed to do was when they took the credit card, they were supposed to compare it right. to fax that they'd been sent. And then if there was an issue, yeah. they then had to keep the customer waiting, <laughs> then they had to phone the credit card people and say, I've got this thing here. And the credit card people say, yes, that has been stolen. Shall we call the police? <laughs> And then the credit card people would call the police all the time while the person in the shop is keeping this customer wow. waiting until the police could come and arrest them. That was their fraud detection. And Needless to say, obviously it was such a ball ache to do that, yeah. it never ever happened. Wow. But that's how you met your wife. That's how I... <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, don't get up. Uh, so, you know, there, was so much, there was so much trust in those days. Yeah, you, know, you would just you could probably nick anything. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, we did nick a lot of stuff, didn't we? Pick a mix from Woolies. You do you remember the big CCTVs in Woolies? They were like big circles with black weird things sticking out. Aliens. Yeah, and 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 they would be moving like like, like that, that eye that came out of the wall in Star Wars and and turning and you'd wait for it to turn and hope that it wasn't watching when you took a two pence sweet. Um, or some people nick cassettes, not me. And um, but yeah, that was the CCT. That was it. Everybody went on the Robin Woolies. Um, wonder why it went bust. But um, no, I mean they lost thousands of pounds on the suite today. Surely from little toddlers. They must have built. They must have built it into their well, their price. Well, I beg to differ. Because <laughs> <laughs> they went pop about ten years ago, <laughs> or maybe longer. Maybe longer. Anyway, good old Woolies. Uh, let's go to a film clip. Okay. Uh, as we're on the subject of uh, technology yeah. and future things, yeah. just a little tiny one here. Marty leads an ordinary life. The old but fly ever amount of anything in the history of the old valley. And 1985 is not his year. But Dr. Brown is about to change all that. Are you telling me you built a tie in my chain? How about the warrior? Yeah. 
you've actually got oh. the magic lace-up boots. But the you? boots are there, and next to it is a pullback Back to the Future, right? And the slogan. Hold on. Can you reach it? Jay, if you're listening to this, James is contorting. Hurting. Getting back was only the beginning. I mean, if that's not an 80s film slogan, I don't know what is. But yes, the, we wanted hoverboards, didn't we? We wanted not the stupid ones with the wheels where the kids got, got a hoverboard daddy from four years ago, whatever it was. That's not a hoverboard, it's on wheels. You the best it. thing about those was they would spontaneously burst into flames, well, wouldn't they? I was going to say, it was the best thing, Andy. Um, <laughs> Father of seven, Andy. <laughs> Best thing was this kid's toy burst into flames. Well, so we're on it. No, but the, the hoverboard, that hoverboard, I mean, that episode in Back to the Future 2, uh, episode, that Back to the Future 2 was absolutely brilliant, wasn't it? Because everything we saw then was just, like the TV uh, TV phones and the, the hoverboards and the um, the different sort of speaking d- gadgets and devices. And the the they had the advert with it was it where the shark came out they had the the billboard wasn't that part of Bill, um, Back to the Future two they've now got those they've now got those sort of three D adverts where they, the right out, where they yeah. come out at you I don't know forty don't, years later I don't understand how those work no I don't we're not meant to we're not, not for us <laughs> just look at some of the other predictions they did in there as well it was video glasses do you remember when um, they said everybody should be wearing video glasses okay talk to people oh and watch it yeah you've got all the um virtual reality stuff now so, yeah so a lot of these predictions did actually come true yeah maybe maybe i mean just not the hoverboard and i'm very bitter about it it did <laughs> burst into flames which then maybe that's why it's never happened it's because they all burst into flames maybe that's why maybe that's why and, and well nobody's around to tell the story of course back to the future so there's an isn't there another one out now yeah there are, they said there's going to be one out, but there isn't. They always promise Back to the Future 4, 5, whatever they do. It. They're never going to do it, are they? Who's going to replace Doc and Marty McFly? I think, do you know what? I think there is one. Do you think Somebody is? watching or listening to this is no. going to say, well, you were talking about Andy, or what are you talking about, Jake? There's no Back <laughs> to the Future 4. They're never going to do it. Well, I wish they would, but they won't. You know, it's just one of those things that you can't relive it. You could do it maybe with a cameo appearance, like they do with Ghostbusters and Dan Ackerman, oh, yeah, that yeah. turn up. That would be quite nice in the background, but it would never be the same would it would it no it has to be I mean, when they do the when they do the remakes it's never ever. never quite the same is it unless you have cameos and then we all go there for a bit of nostalgia of course yeah it's like we're here today andy let me just remind you of our mystery sound for this week the oh, yeah. secret sound Not goes really. like this you can actually sing the words in your head as that oh crikey you know you've given it away it now away. Have I said too much? Oh, usual. Well yeah. done if you've managed to stay listening this long to this <laughs> podcast, by the way. But it's a long one. Technology it's is a long massive long thing. Long We've had a lot of fun on this one as yeah. well. Uh, listen, if you want to take part and you want to tell us what this particular sound is, <laughs> the easiest way to do that is to go to bringbackthe80spodcast.com. If you're feeling particularly excited about this, leave us a voice note on there. Yeah. Otherwise, just leave us a comment in the video or on uh, YouTube yeah. or whatever. Well, you know, we'll harvest all the comments yeah. and we'll pick a winner for next week to win, James. Uh, you can have a Bring Back the 80s t-shirt or two tickets to my Bring Back the 80s tour show, which is this autumn winter. I should say, Andy, that some people are really um, not making the most of this if they're just listening to this because they might be driving somewhere, doing hands-free digitally and just listening. And that's lovely because we both sound very sexy. But there is a lot of stuff visually, particularly in this episode, that I that I've display here. So even if you just have a quick glance at it after you've listened to this on YouTube and have a little scour about on the shelving, it'll help bring back lots of memories because we are surrounded as if we're at a bric-a-brac. Bric-a-brac stores. You like to brought the car boot sale <laughs> with you, James. I know. I'm going to go straight down to the car boot after this and put it on a, a, a trestle table, pasting table, and sell it all off for 40 pence. I'd be like, if I get that. Yeah, uh, it's not up for 40p. I'll say, will you take 2p for this? Yeah, and I'll go, yeah. Because I want to save my marriage. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> that is it for edition number three of the Ring Back the Ages it's podcast. Episode already. Great. I know. Next uh, next time on the show in two weeks, we're going to be doing 80s crushes. Ooh. Who did you have on your bedroom wall? Who didn't I have? Who was up there? Yeah. Look. Who did you fall asleep dreaming of? With blue tack all over your wallpaper. 
if you would like to uh, be around for that that'll be in uh, two weeks time but for now we say thank you for listening to uh, edition three of the bring back the 80s podcast uh, until next time we will say i'll see you next tuesday he will Thanks for listening to this week's edition. We'd love it if you could subscribe in your favourite podcast app. And don't forget, there's a video version on YouTube too. You can contact us using the links in the show notes and on the YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time for another edition of Bring Back the 80s.